Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now say for example you have a function that has some really great output for you and you want to save that output. How do you do that? Well, there's two ways that I recommend and right now we'll go over one of those two ways. So our program is called func6.ksh and it introduces a way to save output from a function back to the main program. And this is all the magic right here. Now, what is this? We have a variable. We're creating a variable called listing. And you see the equal sign here. So we're assigning to it whatever this is. Well, what's this? Let's break it down. We have a dollar sign, parenthesis, parenthesis, and an ls inside of the parenthesis. This means, let me back up, the ls command says just give me a listing of my present directory. Now normally when you run the ls command it produces the output and sends it to your computer screen. However, when we use this corn shell feature, this dollar sign parenthesis parenthesis around a command, whether it's a corn shell command or a Unix command, or a corn shell function, what that means is instead of sending the output to the computer screen, just plop it down right here. Therefore, this is what happens. We get to this line, and we go over here on the right hand side, we run our ls command, and instead of sending it to the output screen, we just plop it down right here because we have our dollar sign parenthesis parenthesis. And then afterward, we take and assign whatever is over here, the output from the ls command, into our variable listing. So, when all is said and done, our variable listing will now contain the ls for our current directory, instead of having the ls go to the computer screen. Now, let's look at a function and I call this function capture and capture is equal to anything inside of these squiggly braces, these curly braces. So what does capture have in it? It has a comment at the beginning that just tells you what the function does, prints to the screen, should print high on one line, followed by this is Jim on the next line, and then print by on the next line. So once again, capture is now equal to these three statements basically right here. So this was just our definition of capture. We didn't actually run it. And right here, we're just printing a blank line. And now we do something similar to what we just did a moment ago. We're taking a variable called answer and we're going to give it whatever is the output from our function capture. So whatever capture would normally send to the output screen gets plopped down right here. So when all is said and done answer should be equal to high carriage return this is Jim carriage return by carriage return and it's stored here, and now we just say that I ran capture. This shouldn't say cube. It should say capture. That's another example we'll go over. And after that, we just simply print out contents of answer. And once again, the dash r in front of our string here just says that if our string begins with a dash, that's not a flag that the print statement needs to worry about. Just print it as is. So if this was dash 5, normally the print statement would think that minus 5 is a flag that goes to the print statement. But when we put the dash capital R in front, it says, hey, if this string starts with a dash, just print it. Don't try to interpret it. 
Now what I want to show you here before we run the program is we ran this function right here and normally the output would go to the computer screen but we're saving it into our variable answer and we're printing just ran capture and then we're printing the contents of answer. So when we run the program we should see a blank line then we should see I just ran capture and then we should see the output from when you run capture. You should not see a blank line, the output of capture, and then I just ran capture. And here we have run the program. It prints a blank line, it prints I just ran capture, and then it prints the result of running capture, which is stored in the variable answer. So if you ever want to capture all the results, all the print statements from a function, just do something like this. Just enclose it in a dollar sign parenthesis, parenthesis and assign the result that gets plopped down right here into a variable.